What's going on, everyone? In today's session, let's go over critical points, okay? And let's first talk about critical points in terms of just a curve, right? The general curve of some function f of x, okay? Which is what is represented here. When we're talking about critical points, all we're talking about are points along this curve, right? Where the slope is zero. And we learned this before when we were plotting, right, the curve of our derivative based on some plot that was given, right, of f of x. And so we said previously that the slope is zero at the pits and at the peaks, right? And so you would expect the slope to be zero at that peak, this pit or this trough, right? This peak, this peak, and at this pit, right? So at all of these points, we know that the slope is going to be zero because the slope, right, represented by m, is, can be thought of as the rise over the run, okay, in terms of the tangent line at those points. And so if we were to drop a tangent line at those points, right, this is what those tangent lines look like. They'd be perfectly horizontal, right, if my picture was perfect. So the tangent lines at all these points are the same. They're just horizontal lines. And so at this point, you can think of it as calculating your slope, right? At these points is calculating the rise over run of these tangent lines. And since they are horizontal, they might have some small amount of run, right? Or change in the horizontal direction, right? If you think about it like this. But when you look at the rise term, right? There's no vertical change. There's no change in the y direction. And so this would go to zero, meaning that your slope would be zero at all of these points. And so when you're trying to find your critical points, right? All you're doing is finding points of your function where the slope is equal to zero. And we know that the slope based on a function f of x can also be defined by the derivative of that function, okay? And so let's say now I give you a function, right, a math equation, um, 6x squared plus um, 3, okay? So let's just do this one, okay? So if I were to give you this function, and I wanted to ask you for the critical points, okay? So find critical points based on this function. All you're trying to do based on this function is find where the slope is equal to zero, right? And we said the slope can also be thought of as the derivative of your function f of x. And so all we're doing here is we're trying to to find the derivative of x, set it equal to zero, right? That's your first step. Your second step is going to be solving for x. So let's try that with this example, okay? So step one, the derivative of your function, right, is just the derivative of this entire right side. So we know that we just need to apply this derivative, right, to each term on this entire right-hand side, right? And we're gonna distribute this in. So the derivative of this first term based on the function rule is exponent two times your current coefficient. Two times six is your current coefficient, okay? Keep your base there. Subtract one from your exponent. Two minus one is one. X to the one is the same thing as X. So leave that plus the derivative with respect to x of three. Three is a constant. The derivative of a constant is always zero, okay? And so this is your derivative, okay? 
And so now that we have our derivative as being 12x, okay, now we can set this to zero. So if I set f prime x equal to zero, that's the same thing as setting 12x equal to zero, okay? So if you set 12x equal to zero and solve for x, you're gonna find that x is equal to zero. So in this case, x is going to be equal to zero. This is going to be a critical point. Critical point. Okay? And now that you know that x is equal to zero is a critical point, meaning it's a place where the slope is zero, right? Now you want to see if it's going, if x is equal to zero represents a peak or if it represents a pit or a trough, right? And the way that you're going to approach this is basically if you look at this, right, let's just consider one pit and one peak. If you consider this peak right here, okay? If you notice on the left-hand side of this, right? The left-hand side of this point where the slope is zero, your plot f of x is positive. It's increasing, right? Meaning that the derivative of your function, right? Or the slope here is going to be positive, right? Meaning that the derivative of your function is positive. As you're coming off of this point to the right, your function f of x is decreasing, and so your slope is going to be negative, right? Because rise over run, it's not rising, it's actually falling. So that rise term is actually negative. And that means that the derivative of your function, right, is going to be negative. Now, if you look at this pit or this trough point, right, it's opposite. Coming in from the left-hand side, your function, f of x, is decreasing, so it's negative, meaning that the slope is negative, right, and that means that the derivative of your function is negative coming from the left. As you're coming off of this point to the right, your function is now increasing, meaning that the slope is positive, right? Rise over run is actually rising, so that means that it's positive. And the derivative of your function, right, this function curve is going to be positive, right? And that's the derivative of this function curve. And so in order to check to see if x is equal to zero, to see if it is a pit or a, if it's a pit or a peak point, we are going to essentially take values that are slightly to the left of x and slightly to the right, right? And you might recognize this from limits, right? So recall that in limits, Let's say we were trying to look at the limit as x approached some value two, right? For example, of some function. To do this, we evaluated the limit as x approached two from the left, right, of our function. And we also looked at the limit as x approached two from the right of this function. And we did this, right, to check for convergence right? And this was in the context of limits, right? Today, we're going to take this same concept of approaching a point from the left and the right, and we are simply going to evaluate the derivative of our function, right? We're going to evaluate this at some x value a little bit to the left, right? Or actually, a little bit to the left of our critical point, so in this case, zero, a little bit from the left, and we're gonna evaluate this at some value a little bit to the right of our critical point, which is zero. 
Okay, so let's do that. So in terms of approaching this from the left, right? Let's pick a number x is equal to zero from the left. Let's say it's gonna be negative 1.99, okay? And then in terms of approaching zero from the right, let's pick x is equal to 0 0.01, okay? And so all we're gonna do is in our derivative, right? The derivative that we calculated, 12x, okay? Wherever you see an x in here, you're gonna put negative 1.99. Wherever you see an x in here, you're gonna put 0 0.01. And we're gonna solve for that, okay? So let me use my calculator. Just to make sure, times negative 1.99. So this is a negative number. So in this case, it's negative 23.88. In this case, we don't really care about the number too much. We're looking for the sign. So in this case, that's a negative number, okay? Now, for this one, you know that a positive number times a positive number is going to give you some positive number, okay? But just for completion, uh, let me just do this. This is gonna be 0 0.12, but we don't care too much about the number, we care about the sign, okay? And so now we know that as we come toward this critical point, x is equal to zero, right? As we approach x is equal to zero, right? This is x is equal to zero. As we're coming from the left, right, and this is a critical point, so I'm going to put this point here. As we're coming from the left, the slope is negative, right? The slope is negative, meaning that the derivative of your function is negative, right? So you're going to come in decreasing, and as you're coming off of this point, right, the derivative evaluated slightly to the right of your critical point, you found this to be positive, meaning that the slope, right, the slope is positive, meaning that the derivative of your function is positive, right, the rate of change, right, and so it's going to be positive. So over here, slope is positive, derivative of your function, positive. Opposite over here, slope is negative. The derivative of your function is negative. So because you have this, right, you know that this is going to be a minimum point or a minima, right? Or how we like to call it, a fit or a trough. Okay? And so uh, that's how you evaluate your critical point, right? And to check to see if it is a minima or a maxima, right? Or a pit or a peak. And so if you understand this, then good job so far. If you don't, then feel free to pause the video and go over points where um, you're a little bit confused, okay? And so we said that in finding critical points, all we're trying to do is find points along our f of x curve, right? where the slope is zero, meaning where the derivative is zero. So if I gave you a function in terms of a math equation, right, all you wanted to do was find the derivative and set that equal to zero. That was step one. Then after that, you would solve for your critical point, in this case, x, because f is a function of x, right? And so that's what we did here. We found our critical point by finding our derivative of our original function, right? That turned out to be 12x. We set this equal to zero, solve for x, that's our critical point. And now we wanted to check some point slightly to the left and slightly to the right of this critical point to check if it's a pit or a peak, right? And we did this by just picking some arbitrary number really close on the left and to the right. So for the left, approach, we chose negative 1.99 for um, 
the approach from the right, we chose 0 0.01, right? And so we got our answers, right? Because we evaluated the derivative of our function, which was 12x at x is equal to these values. And we said we don't really care about the number value, we just care about the sign. So we determined that coming in from the left, right, of this vertical point, that the derivative is negative. The rate of change is negative, meaning the slope is negative, and the derivative of your function is negative. So it's negative, it's decreasing. Coming off of this point, right, to the right, the derivative of our function evaluated at 0 0.01 turned out to be positive. So a positive rate of change means a positive slope, right? And your derivative is positive, so you're coming off positive. You're increasing. And so by finding out this trend, we found out that this is actually a minimal, okay? And so if I were to give you um, an example problem, try this on your own and then we will get together after and we'll try to figure this out together, okay? And so let's say I give you the function f of x is equal to, let's just say uh, x squared plus 9x plus uh, 14. So, given this function, okay, find and assess the critical points. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video and try it yourself, and we'll get back together and do it together. Okay, sweet. So let's see if our answers match. This is the function you were given, and you were asked to find the critical points and to assess them, okay? And we said that critical points are just going to be points along your function curve where the slope is zero, right? And so we said that this is not representative of this equation, but if you had a curve that looked like this, right? We said that we're just trying to find points along the curve where the slope is zero because the slope, right, represents the rise over run, right, the steepness and direction of the tangent line at these points, okay? And so we said that all we're gonna do is find the derivative, right, find, evaluate the derivative of our function, set it equal to zero, so find the derivative of our function, Okay, right, set it equal to zero, and then solve for our critical values. So let's do that. So based on this function, the derivative of our function is gonna be the derivative of this entire side, right? And so it's gonna be the derivative of this entire side. And we know that we need to distribute the derivative to every term in here. So let's do that. Derivative of x squared, right? Two times one is your new coefficient because you have an invisible one back here because one x squared is the same thing as x squared. So two x, subtract one from your exponent, two minus one is one. x to the one is the same thing as x. So leave that. Plus, there's a one here as well, right? So one times nine is a new coefficient. Keep your base there, subtract one from your exponent. One minus one is zero. Anything raised to the zero power is just one. So x to the zero is one. One times nine is just nine. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Plus the derivative of 14. 14 is a constant. Derivative of a constant is zero, okay? So now we have our derivative, which is two x plus nine. Okay, and we said that now we can set this thing equal to zero, meaning we can set 2x plus 9 equal to zero. Now we're going to solve for x, okay? 
to subtract 9 from each side. x is equal to negative 9 over 2, which is 4.5. So negative 4.5. Okay. Now, same thing. This is our critical point, right? Or the point where the slope is 0. So we found that. <clears throat> now we want to see if this is a minima or a maxima, right? To see if it's a maxima or a minima. And we said that to check to see if it is a maxima, right? Or a minima, basically. We're going to evaluate the derivative, right? The derivative function. Um, slightly to the left of this critical point and slightly to the right of this critical point. So we're going to evaluate the derivative, right, slightly to the left of negative 4.5, right, from the left. And we're also going to evaluate the derivative slightly to the right of 4.5 negative 4.5, right? And so let's choose some numbers here. So um, let's evaluate at negative 4.51. To the left and then to the right, let's evaluate at negative 4.49. And remember, all we care about really is the sign, negative or positive, um, of what we're getting. So let's do that. So let's do this one first. Okay. So two times, and then remember that this is what we are calculating, right? So in this case, sorry about that. Wherever you see x, right, in here, for this one, plug in negative 4.51. And then for this bottom one, wherever you see x in here, plug in negative 4.49. Okay. So 2 times negative 4.51. That's fine. This ends up being a negative number, right? Now let's try this one. And negative 4.49 plus nine, this ends up being a positive number. So we have determined that, right? And this is our x-axis. This is our critical point at x is equal to negative 4.5, right? Since it's a critical point, I'll put a point there. And so we said coming in from the left, right? Approaching this point from the left, the rate of change, the derivative, is negative, right? It's negative. Meaning that the slope is negative here, right? Because rise over run, it's not rising, it's actually falling. And the derivative is negative. Coming off of this point to the right, right? The rate of change, the derivative is positive. So the rate of change, the rate of change is positive, meaning the slope is positive, right? Rise over run is actually rising. What's going on? And so because of this trend, we can determine that this critical point is a minima point. Okay? So if this is um, what you got, then great job. Um, if you made a mistake or if you're a little bit unclear, go ahead and just go back. Um, I feel free to just work back to the problem, okay? And then maybe try the example that we did first and this example on your own. You feel comfortable with it, okay? So if there's any questions uh, or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible, okay? This um, was finding critical points and assessing them.